so excited to chat to you today uh, about all things Not Fest Australia and Slipknot and everything uh, going on at the moment because there are a lot of cool milestones that you're celebrating 25 years since the self titled, 20 years since Volume 3, over a decade of Not Fest. First up, how are you feeling? Feeling pretty good. You know, we, we've been on the road a long time, uh, finally have a little break, uh, but it's not so much of a break. As you can imagine, uh, we've been rehearsing, um, practicing. Um, as you know, we've made some adjustments uh, to our lineup and our thought process. So during that little shift, we also put shows up. And like I've been saying, I'm real proud to say, you know, just because of the culture, I mean, in the midst of what we are doing, shows are sold out. So it's creating a lot of anticipation. It's creating a lot of craziness. So we're feeling really good. I'm feeling really good. Um, there's a lot of exciting things coming to everyone um, starting very soon. So it's a, it's a good time for Slipknot and the culture, I believe. Absolutely, especially with the addition of Not Fest Down Under last year and then the second time running this year. Of course, you've been to our shores many times. Uh, one of my, right. yeah, one of my favorite memories was I think Soundwave. It was probably the best mosh pit that I've ever been in. Uh, just feeling very united with uh, my metal brothers and sisters and people around me. Um, when you think of your time in Australia, is there any particular memories that come to mind? I was having a. I did an interview yesterday that touched on the subject. <clears throat> we were fortunate enough to come to Australia at the on the self-titled album, you know, back in 99, 2000. Uh, I believe it was probably more like 2000. Um, and, you know, without going too much into it, I can remember back in those days we used to do in-store signings uh, before shows, not on days off, like before the show, then go play. And there were so many people. One of them, it might have been Adelaide, uh, one of them, we couldn't finish the in-store, so we came up with this idea that we would do it after the show. So we set it up, we did the sh we did an in-store, several thousand people, uh, straight into the show, complete destruction, straight away to the in-store, and all I remember are like fans climbing up telephone poles, police on horses, Kid, you know, fans everywhere. Um, just, just like mayhem, you know. And this is the first album. You're talking about we're nobody, we have nothing, we're trying to make our name for everyone. No one knows who we are, and there's already this happening. And uh, very fond, very fond, um, very blessed memories of that, you know. That's it's hard to think back on all those times. So yes, uh, to have some and to have them imprinted so deeply uh, really, really matters. So it's, uh, I could go on and on and on. I have so many stories uh, about all, you know, I've been to Bon Scott's, you know, grave. I've, uh, I've done everything and anything you can do in each territory, which would have been, you know, Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne, Adelaide, and Perth. We no longer play Perth anymore, and we don't get to Adelaide as much, I don't think. So I think it's just been Melbourne, Sydney, and probably Brisbane, you know. So I don't know. Um, but love it all and always a, a really good part of our days. Climbing up telephone poles must be uh, a signature move for us Australians here because I seem to recall that happening last year at Knotfest. What? Yeah, every show there's some there's some dude or you know I, I don't really remember any females doing it, but I remember dudes all the time my whole career climbing stuff, hanging from stuff, having to stop a song, stop you know stop the show for weeks, you know. But you guys are really relaxed down there. It doesn't seem like they get in that much trouble. You know, it seems like maybe they get a little slap on the hand and are let back in the show. 
that doesn't fly in most places, but uh, it's always really cool. But anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, not at all. That's your your interview. That's um yeah, that's so funny. I um I, I mean, what do you think thinking back since that was happening from the first ever album you're saying and you're overseas in a completely different country, halfway across the world, from your perspective, what was it about that first album that you think really resonated with people's, I guess, emotions and, and started developing this culture? You know, oddly enough, uh, we went to the Grammys, um, you know, a couple of days back and oddly enough, through speaking with certain members in the band, I had gotten the phone handed to Ross Robinson who, who you know, produced the first two records. And we got in that same conversation about that time period and what was going on with Sobat. And, you know, it's really unexplainable. It's really different. It's really different. I know a lot of people. I've been around a lot of people. I think a lot of people have a lot to say about us. Um, we're, we're different. And we're special. And that time period and that album, you know, I, I haven't really been able to look at it much in my career until a couple of years back. They started talking about this 25th. And, you know, I'm not a big fan on like record labels and everyone associated with the band. Yeah. Like, oh, we got a three year and two week and five hour and six second, you know, anniversary going on you know better sell everything under the sun to everyone hate that uh, but you got to do what you have to do for the human mind that's brainwashed in a sort of formulated way that i can't stand but now that i've been tripping out on the 25 year anniversary for a couple of years and i have about five months to complete and you can imagine the business people, they want to hear everything to the 25-year anniversary. You know, it could be toothpicks. Hey, let's sell them during the 25-year anniversary. They'll really go. I get it. So we have, I, it's my job to make sure we have a lot of great stuff um, that's real to the fans. Like we have live shows, two track, left and right, you know, from a board of, a recording a board at the front of house in some 200 seater and we've recorded it two track so we have a lot of these cool, cool things but to get to what you're saying is because of me being so driven to dive, dive so deep within my you know 25 years i sort of erased the idea that i was making a product or 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 shaping up or wrapping up a memory and then and what happened was it ended up being like forensic files. It's like a cold case. I got myself all over the walls. And it's the smallest details to break the case. So the case is that lately I've just been really, I mean, I've just been overwhelmed by that first album and the people on it and the people around it. Uh, I my eyes have been focused, family, you know, friendship, the band, art, music. That's just a few things. Uh, that's what I've been trying to focus on for 25 years. But now I'm dead in my tracks, just thinking a lot about Paul, thinking a lot about Joey. Um, I, I, I'm telling a lot of people stories right now. A lot of people in the world have a lot of idea what they, a lot of ideas of what they think it is, and I understand. You know, loss is an incredible thing. Memories can be hard. Moving forward can be really hard. But because I'm sort of yet stopped in my tracks, you know, I, I'm kind of telling people like when 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 we were doing the 25, you don't know that your brothers, you know, are going to be legends. You don't you don't look at Joey and go. My God, you wrote the best drums on the planet. You know, it's more like, hey, 
quit looking at me when you get out of your boat. You know, like, <laughs> can I have that last piece of pizza? <laughs> you know, like, you know, quit having so much attitude. Or are the same to me, you know, them giving me, like, shut your mouth. Bob. You talk to me. That, that's what I have with him, you know. A friendship, a love, uh, a band. You know, we had a band. We had a focus. But I wasn't like, bro, I love that fill you're doing, that descending musical sort of fill you're doing with Corey and Wait and Bleed. I'm like, it's so musical. And you guys are back and forth. Like, you don't, you're not really doing that much. I'm not. I can't speak for everybody, but now I'm like, oh my God, I'm so immersed in the first album. So it's just, I, I feel like it is a simulation because you can't write it. And I feel like it's my program and it's a big part of the program. So it's been beautiful as of lately. Uh, I took October Gray, Paul Gray's daughter, to the Grammys. Um, she's 13. That's and amazing. I've been re. Yeah, recently I've been reunited with her. We've had a real hard time um, making our lives communicate. And lately we changed that and we've been brought them together. And anyway, I got to take her and it was, it was, it was great and it was hard because when I found out October was 13, I hadn't realized that Paul had been gone for 13 years and just chose not to to uh, calculate those numbers in my brain. It's just another day we're just moving is right here. <clears throat> so as of lately, I have been immersed in feelings and emotions and uh, memories and just, just epiphanies of what we were and just how important that time frame was for us and for everyone that is in this with us. And I'm just so blessed to have had that be my life. Yeah, amazing. And that perspective must, I mean, it sounds like it's its only something that you could have got with with that perspective, I guess, looking looking back. Yeah, sure. it's um, a lot of good, a lot of good things coming for everyone. As you can imagine, I've hoarded my own art. Um, so I kept, I have hundreds, if not thousands of videotapes um you know reel to reels that's tapes you know sd cards like I, you name it polaroids i have thousands of 35 millimeter cross process infrared film you know because i used to take chances so i sometimes i pay up to 70 dollars a roll of infrared film and then have Stefan Seskis, who's my mentor, who I take out on the road, he'd zap, and then we'd take it into process, and we'd cross-process, just ruin it. You know? Well, it's not ruining it, but just cross-process it, and that changes the white in your eyes, black, and, you know, you can't you can't reverse that. I, I took those chances then. They're there, and everything's just sitting around, and um, I'm having a good time. Uh, getting in and um, looking at all, it's pretty heavy. It's pretty, it's pretty phenomenal. And then on the other end of it, because all the businesses are always doing anniversaries, um, you kind of lose track. You're like, oh, you know, all hope. Oh, point five, blah, 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 blah. It's like nothing matters because it's like this year, that year, three years, four years, four and a half years. But you brought up earlier, I'm really proud of. It's very fun for me to be working so intensely on the self-title and at the same time getting ready to celebrate volume three. And I was exp explaining this yesterday, is that Slipknot, self-titled, and Iowa sort of, sort of go hand in hand because you have your whole life to write your first one, and the stories are unexplainable for that. And then Iowa is the aftermath of what happens to you after you uh, make your first record. They give you no time. They say, get this done. You're the Roadrunner's first platinum act. Um, you've taken over the world, so to speak. 
and all these eyes are on you and all these expectations. So you write a little album, you know, a collection of records known as Iowa. And you, 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 you started off with our area code 515 where we live. And you have Sid Wilson bawling his eyes out for family matters caught by Ross Robinson right into people equal shit. So those two albums are like yin and yang, if you will. Okay. So they're, they, you know, both done by Ross and it's kind of like hello. And then sort of like, this is what happened in those two records. So it's really special for me to say, okay, that's a thought process. Let's start a new one. The new one being volume three, subliminal verses. Six and a half months at the Houdini Mansion with Rick Rubin. I'm a huge fan of Rick Rubin. I believe you choose your um, you choose your involvement with him. If you choose to be involved in the way that it is, then your rewards are rather large. Uh, you know, like anything in life. So. I have a billion stories about that. Um, as everybody knows, there was some sort of shift musically. Why wouldn't there have been? You know, you go from Ross Robinson to Rick Rubin, which it, it's only paintbrushes, right? It's all speculative and subjective. There is no better or worse. There's just what's best for the song in the moment. And you just hope everything's in line. Can't expect everyone, but that album is one of my favorite because the first two you can't explain like you can't you can't divide those two you can't you can't like bid them up against the rest of your stuff they're they're religion they're mean you know and the third one is sort of like planting your feet and like going okay <laughs> you know we had burned so many bridges by the end of iowa 9 11 happened Everything was shut down. We only toured for seven months. Three of them was before 9-11. Uh, we had quit middle tour of Pledge of Allegiance with Romstein on System of the Down. I don't know. I don't remember how many shows we did, but it wasn't that many. And then it was done. And we were done. And we, uh, we, uh, we let go of someone in management and all hell broke loose. And, um, man, I mean, we just about didn't make it. So the fact that we got to the Houdini Mansion and we were able to continue is a lot of history. So it's very special to acknowledge that coming up uh, because it is a, 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 a pinnacle in our career, pivoting moment where, you know, it's not good or bad. It's just the mind, you know, uh, uh, lots of lots of it. Crazy things happen in order to make the band continue. A lot of it was mentally, spiritually among us. We did the best we could. For all I know, it was all my fault. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm older and wiser now, and I'm able to look back, and I'm, uh, I'm pretty um, upset with myself on certain ways I held myself. But, you know, we wouldn't be where we're at if all of us weren't what we were when we were when we were. <laughs> so... Anyway, not like I just kind of went a long way with that because you brought it up and it's kind of touching base on volume three, some little verses, a little bit on Iowa because I feel so strongly that it's connected to the self titled. And as you know, in June, it'll be 25 years, almost half my life to one thought process that I created with Paul Gray and others. And um, here we are, relevant, still kicking it, having a great time. Um, we got our own festival, bringing it to Australia again. And, um, it's really just a thought process for everybody, uh, because, you know, we need a little time before we come back. So it's always good to just keep, you know, people need the energy and vibration of the rock we can bring. So it's like, why not? It's really hard to do. And you can imagine it's really hard for us being from the States. And just, you know, there's a lot of extra hours, time, and monetary aspects that go into it that normally wouldn't if it was in our backyard. So it's labor. It, it, it's all, everything we do is a labor of love, but that's just because we love it. I'm not trying to say it like, 
it's not worth doing, but it totally. is all worth doing. Yeah, it's all worth doing because of the love. So anyway, hopefully yeah. that answers a little bit of all of that stuff. Oh, absolutely. And one of the things that I think Slipknot does particularly well is create such an immersive experience and just listening to you reflect and see how immersed um, you're getting into that reflection and into those, you know, in, in particular, you were talking about the first three albums and that just kind of echoes out into the stratosphere in um, creating Knotfest and the immersive experience that you uh, wanted for Knotfest. And the first Knotfest was in um, 2012 and you actually had Lamb of God on the bill, which Lamb of God are playing here in Australia as well, of course, um, which is really cool. It's, um, you know, though on the first Knotfest, you've done a lot of touring with Lamb of God. What's, um, what's your friendship like with the band? I mean, I try to maintain the best friendship I can out on the road with everyone. I would like to think that we're great. I know the guys, um, known them for a very long time. We've come up the ladder together um, from the very beginning. Nothing but great human beings. Um, I've seen their changes. Um, I've seen them grow. They've seen us grow. Um, I'm just one of those guys, right or wrong, I got a lot of family stuff and it takes me away from like starting more relationships with anyone. So I'm, and I'm an only child. So I'm, I'm sort of isolated all the time. And I definitely want to have relationships with more people. It's just that I wouldn't be doing them any services because my fam, my personal family life is pretty complex. You know, we lost a child. Um, like I'm a grandpa now, um, you know, my youngest son's in a band touring the world. My other son's trying to find himself after losing his sister. My wife struggles with some genetic things. So we're pretty focused in on ourselves because it's, um, it's all day and all night. And, you know, like for instance, I always do my, I always do my best to like sit down with someone like Randy or Mark. You know, I, I just really talk to those guys a lot in Lamb of God. And I just do my best to say hi and how are your families and what's up with the band and what's going on and do my best, you know. And I love that, you know, but it's, this business is hard for all of us, you know, because even if you were talking to each other, when's the next time you could actually make time to see each other? But maybe, maybe that's what's needed. Maybe I knew, need to do more of that. But, um, yeah, I love those guys. Great band. Um, we were, we were there when Randy got out. He played Not Fest was his first show when he got out of that little situation he was in and we were just happy to receive him for safety and just to see his face and know that he was, he was okay. And man, I, I made sure I went and watched and immediately it, to me, it didn't appear like he had been through anything in that situation he went through. And when I talked to him, I'm like, give me some knowledge. What do I need to know from what you've been through? And he was just that still that happy soul. And that's what we look forward to. You know, I, I had that with a lot of people on the road, Jamie Jossa, Jay, I mean, he's like one of my favorite people ever. And, you know, like we don't talk, you know, as much or, you know, try to say hi when we can. But anytime I can get on the phone with him, you know, I'm in tears laughing or, you know, just, just, you know, he's one of the best. So, you know, I have a lot of friends that I talk to once in a while, but like I said, I'm pretty family oriented and it's pretty, uh, it's pretty intense. 24 seven over here, but, um, yeah, I, all the bands that you can imagine, we all came up together and what a great thing to just still, still hear the name Lamb of God or, you know, Slipknot or Pantera, or whatever. Yeah. You know, everything. So it's like, it's just great to have that, you know, that's my, that's where we come from. So you get it. Yeah, it's it's all about the metal the metal family, and I, I feel like there's a, you know, I don't I don't know about you, but with my metal peers, I feel like there's like an understanding that's unspoken because you have this bond that unites you through music, which is um, 
you know, it's the best. Um, one of the things that I love about NotFest lineups is your ability to bring these legends together. I mean, last year we had, you know, bands like Parkway Drive and Slipknot play with up and comers like Aussie's Void of Vision. This year we've got, you know, of course, like Pantera and Disturbed and, um, you know, Wind Waker, Aussie's Aussie up and comers. And you've got this really cool balanced lineup and it really feels like there's a lot of thought gone into creating a lineup that really spans, you know, decades of, of metal careers. What is it like when you sit down and you think, okay, we've got a knot fest here in Australia. Where do you begin? Ooh, where do you begin? Fortunately for me, you know, I offer a, a lot of differentness to the festival, you know, um, we just have a lot of wonderful people that know what they're doing. Uh, I wouldn't know where to begin, but you do begin. <clears throat> I think one thing fans need to know, and I was talking a little bit about this this week, is that, like, let's take all these bands, for example. Number one, you have bands that are in the studio right now. They're not going to go play. They're, gonna, they're not going to mix thought process, processes. If they're smart, they're not going to do that. Then you have bands that just got out of the album you know, making process and an hour and some sort of pre-production rehearsal possibility for tour. So they're not available. And then you got bands that are already out on tour on contract with other bands. So they're unavailable. Then you have bands that have been on the road for a while and it doesn't matter how much money you have, possibly are not doing it because they've just done the grind and it's time for some family, some time for some rest, spirituality, you know, get the mental. So there's so much against you to begin with to even start somewhere. It really just starts probably with the roll of the dice. You know, you start with something like a Pantera or, you know, a Slipknot if it's the year or something. And then you go from there. And everybody lines up. It's a big business. It's a lot of phone calls. It's a lot of erasing. You can imagine, you write something down, three minutes later, it's erased. You know, a week goes by, you go to dinner, you think everything's good, you get a call, <laughs> band's dropping off. You know, I mean, it's, it's a mess. Luckily for all of us that rock out, you have the other side, you know, so whereas I'm in a band, with a singer, I know other bands with singers, and I might talk to that singer. Well, in this business, you have managers and agents and labels and trucking companies and SF, you know, like Pyro. Like they all, they all know each other. They all have each other's phone numbers. They all want to make it work because they got to pay their mortgages too. So, where do you start? I guess you start wherever they want. But the good news is it doesn't start anywhere unless a band says, we'll do it. So they can be really smart, but it still takes the art to put the chess piece on the board, I think. you know uh, That's how I still stay in it. Otherwise, I'd just be a calculator or some shit and I'd have to get out. you know I still believe in the vibration and uh, especially the culture because you know I started this for myself, so I believe like I'm the first magnet, you know. Uh, uh, we create a band for ourselves, who we are. That's what we want to do. We want to be comfortable with our with our world, you know. So and we did. We made it. Absolutely. And I know that also, you know, one of the things that you're involved in is creating, creating that immersive experience and the you know the artwork and and how things are going to look and and the creative sides of things um what do you enjoy most about putting this festival together well i like it when my partners and everybody give me a little loot to do just what you said you know make some cool stuff and do some things but it's all dollars and cents we've tried a lot of things <clears throat> you know i i used to have a lot of fun in des moines iowa the fair the uh, iowa state fairs in the summertime, and they have this famous ride. I always call it the Death Wheel, and it's the Ring of Fire. It's just a circle, and you get in it, you go whoop, 
and then you go like this, and then you go like that. And they stop you up top, and all your money falls out, and your phone, and it's all over the place. And I'd always make my tech write it for me because I'd have to play, and I'd be doing VIP. And he's, you know, a bigger guy, muscular and stuff, and he can barely fit in this thing. He's scared to death of it. And I'd make the carny guy stop him up there longer. And so we'd have fun, and the, and the fans would have fun. It's a crazy ride. A little dangerous. I don't know, just old. Not dangerous, but, like, just, you know, like, whoa, that's, <laughs> that's some crazy stuff. So we've done a lot of different fun, odd stuff. <clears throat> try different things all the time, keep it going. As you know, the thing I'm most proud of, and it's really, you know, I'm going to say it here first. I'm really, 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 I, I am. I'm going to say it here first. Um, I'm really proud of uh, the museum that I put together, and I can say I, because I've had so many people look me in the face and sort of say like I was dumb and sort of stupid for thinking these kinds of things. And it's okay. I've had that my whole career. And I do mean like stupid, you know, because a lot of people might think money, you know, it costs money to put a mask that I've held uh, for 30 years or, or 25 years or whatever, and put it in a little case for all the fans to see, you know, I guess that's going to cost some money. So people whinge, but I'm most proud of being able to supply the thought process of the past and tangible items. I'm a fond believer of the subconscious, the idea, bringing it to the consciousness, bringing it to reality, holding it in your hand, potentially tasting it, smelling it, breaking it apart, reassembling it, whatever. So I've kept all this, uh, the, the, what I could. And what made sense. So we try to bring that. It's very hard to do. Uh, to bring everything I have, they got it's got to go in sea containers. You know, possibly take on pirates out of the ocean. Get to, get to Australia, and then forklifts. People that want to understand instead of go, this is a bunch of junk. We do. We have people now that travel with it, that take care of it. We haven't organized. We have an idea, you know, but as of lately, you know, a lot of people just want to take, man. They, 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 people have taken from the museum, uh, for whatever reason, really? you know, they, like literally uh, stolen from the let's, museum. No, 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 no. Let's, oh. let's, 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 let's get it right. Let me get, let me get it right. Uh, so the stuff that I own, okay. And I say, oh, that doesn't really matter to people that, you know, Slipknot owns. Um, so lots of stuff has been stolen and lots of stuff has been taken. And both are fine with me, in my opinion, because if you need it more than I do, you should have it. You know, you should have it. So that's my little thing to the world. I hope everybody believes me on that. You know, uh, it's a hard thing to go through that stuff, to have something uh, yours taken from you. And, and you know, we all know what that's like, you know, but it's still not such a wonderful thing that if someone needed a Slipknot thing that much, I guess I'd be okay with it, you know, because like, man, that's what we did. Doesn't make it acceptable or um, like giving the right to continue to do it. But there's a lot of people in the world that see the museum as differently as someone like myself. I can't speak for the outside people of what they think, what they want. I can't speak for other band members. I can't speak for the fans. I can only speak for me the guy who came up with the museum, the guy who set it up with other people that believed in it, who listened to me, and added to it. I didn't come up with all of it. It took a group effort. But I am really proud of being noticed that we have our own little flair of feeling and art 
and things that you feel when you go in. You know, you're like, okay, you know, I got these great bands. I'm here with my people. You know, we all know what it's like to go to the same venue over and over and over again. It becomes, we become institutionalized to it. And we realize that, okay, the parking works here. The band is here. I, I know what tickets I want. So I'm not as hard on it as I used to be. I used to just be really difficult with those, those, those kind of those, those feelings, you know, but now I'm like safety organization. It's my job to give it a skin, a face, a feeling, a smell. So the museum I'm really proud of um, here pretty soon, you know, I'll just put it out in the airwaves. You know, if you got slip knot stuff that you're proud of, give the clowner, give the clowner a met, you know, you know, hold the clown and we'll make sure we uh, display that stuff. It's for all of us. It's not um, for anything else than for our culture to be able to walk in, smell, touch, taste. If you've been at a VIP thing where I've walked around and been in a museum, you know that I've cried. You know that I've been in there and had to take a moment and cried over a shoe or a stick or obviously a mask from a brother who's passed or a brother who's in still or a guitar with original strings on it or a carbon head that was used for recording songs. This shit's personal to me. And if you're not in the band, you need to fuck off. You know what I'm saying? This shit's real. So I'm really proud of that stuff. I'm really proud that you are able to acknowledge that you know Slipknot has a feeling because we do. We have a sound. We have our own. You know it's us. It comes on the radio. You're like, that's Slipknot. You walk in, you feel a certain thing. You're like, I'm, I'm in Slipknot territory. So <clears throat> there'll be some museum stuff. Uh, I put some personal stuff in there uh, as of lately. Uh, to cause ruckus, like I do. Well, I was going to and ask. Apparently, the uh, this year's collection is going to feature some draw dropping, jaw dropping stuff. And yeah, that I mean, you, you were talking about going through like old tapes and old memorabilia from you know from albums past. Um, can you? Yeah, what can you tell us about this year's collection? Well, like I said, as of recently, things have uh, you know gone to their rightful place if you will you know in my opinion things have been adjusted and that makes me the clown go in real deep that makes me go into my stuff and then when i go into my stuff it's the only stuff really needed because it's a lot of your stuff and meaning like other band members and stuff stuff that was given to me for example i have you know I'm blessed to have had a, a piece of paper or two with like a famous song lyric on it that Corey wrote, just left it. I'm like, you need to take this. You're going to have kids one day. He's like, no, no, you can have that sheet. So I keep on it. You know, if he wanted it for his children, I'd hand it over to him. But for now, I just dig in the, the, the boxes and try to find old stuff that was throwaway that ended up being sort of Egyptian tombish you know like real thought process so we'll, we'll see i've given some of my masks that no one's ever seen um some really different things and you know like i said we got a lot of wonderful people that work with the museum so they organize it and they make it like better to look at stuff so because we've done it once we're able to bring a new sort of thing we brought what was from japan back adjusted it you know Move things around, got it to where it needed to be, to the people it needed to be to. And then now there's a readjustment, um, more personal stuff, and uh, that got sent off. Uh, so I think it's been on the water for a minute now. I don't know if it's your way yet, but it's it's on your on its way. Well, good to know. Good to know that it's on its way because uh, things tend to take time to get to us here on our uh, big island. I mean, you've created... The, this band, you've created this festival, which ha which is its own entity, and then you've also created this media conglomerate with 
podcasts and daily content. I mean, it's really a metalhead's dream TV station that you've created on notfest.com. What next do you want to create for heavy music fans? That's a good idea. Good question. I mean, really, my focus is on Slipknot more than it ever has been because I want to go out the way we came in. I want to go out as friends. I want to go out agreeing. I want to go out loving what we do. Um, I want to touch as many people as possible. I'm very excited about the this idea of a new drummer. Um, there's many reasons for it. Um, it's not to be confused. Um, it doesn't matter what the situation may seem like, um, unless you're in the band and understand, you know, there, there's no hard feelings. There never was. We just went our way. Understand? Like, there was really no bad things. That's as much as I can say. Um, what I can say is we just slipped on, decided to, you know, move on. And, uh, that's what we've done. And um, I'm very excited for what we have done. And we're really working hard. And, um, you know, there'll be new music. There'll be new masks. There'll be new people. There'll be new ideas. Celebrating a 25-year anniversary. I would imagine there'd be some shows that could be 200 people, 500 people, 700 people, 2,000 people. I heard you mention then, that in an interview, and I thought that was yeah. really interesting. Some some smaller club shows. Yeah, I'm not I'm not interested in playing everybody's games. You know, we we do good. Some not does great. Cool. We're going to continue doing great. What I want to do is what I want to do. What I want to do is play in front of 200 people. You know, and I I just say the word I only because I'm not going to speak for the rest of the guys. Um. But I would imagine we, as a unit, would love to see what it feels like to, you know, just give our vibration in a smaller place with an out of control life form, you know, where it's all tangible, where the walls can be seen on all four sides, the ceiling. I can see the eyeballs in the last row and like my foot's on a barricade. Like, you know, but our sound is just like shaking the foundation. Um, but it has to be safe. It has to be safe for everyone. And um, I imagine you're going to see that. And how can we do the 25 year anniversary rollout and not play the entire album? How can that, how could that be? I mean, that doesn't seem any sense to me and I'm in the band. So pretty much, you know, is that done yet? I, mean, I wouldn't tell you anyway, but, you know, but, but I would think that that's going to happen. You know, I would think that surprise shows, like you're going to be at work, you're going to get up and get a coffee and you'll be like, hey, it's a good day. And you get to work and you're like, Hey, can I help you? Blah, 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 blah. And then someone you know calls and goes, tells you that we just said we're going to be somewhere in one hour playing the first album from beginning to end. And there's yeah. only like 200 people can get in there. I mean. I quit. <laughs> for me. Yeah. <laughs> me too. Me too. So, I mean, the point is, that's what I want. I want some fun like that. You have a smile on your face. It's a, it's a genuine, like, you're in your head smile. You're like, you're smiling because you're like what you hear but you're in your mind visualizing that you're like literally like what like what would that be like and that's what i'm that's where i'm at like me on stage with my brothers like before we were signed and had anything playing the song eyeless that we played on you know we played a lot of those songs the song sick the song gently the song iowa wait and bleed spit it out liberate no life all these songs were played before we were signed in a basement in small show stages on the bar aisle. I mean, we've done this. Can we do it again? I don't know. You know, I don't know. I really don't know um, because it's safety first. It really is. It'd be a bum out if we were like all want to have a good time and then 
something tragic happens. So it's like when you go from doing what we're doing and trying to do it, you got to have everybody on page. But I would imagine Slipknot's going to have everybody on page. Very cool. Very cool. And sort of heading to the end of my questions now, I'd really love to know with with all the things that you've created, and I mean you yourself are a filmmaker as well, and um, I mean what is the legacy that you want to leave behind? Great question. Thanks for asking. I mean, I struggle a lot with that because I'm a I, I have way too high of expectations in life and I get let down a lot for myself. It's, I don't get let down with people more or less. I just get let down with me. Um, I'm, I'm trying to learn how to chill, if you will. Um, but I just burn, you know, I just go and go and go. So right now, right now, the simulation of my life is like the output of reality is sort of caught up with my upbringing. So like I'm 54 years old, a lot of what I saw being made and what I was a part of is just flourishing now. So for example, you know, I believe a lot of people of my generation was working on the AI, working on, the, you know, getting everything going from the internet to everything, working it, working. Because you have to understand like, I was there the very first day we were allowed to get on the internet. Now they're making computers with lights and cool fans and, you know, just, it's so fun. Everyone's having fun making these machines. Where it was, wasn't five, six, seven years ago, you know, Apple's trying to sell us integrated everything, you know, the cameras in here and it's all here, take it. And that's what we want. But now, we like building machines again. We're getting in there and add lights. And it's looking like alien stuff. So I, I, I want you to know that when the internet first got out, we were, we were in, you know, stores like Comp USA, Best Buy, buying video cards and mother cards and chips. And, you know, then you get it. And you know what the hell you're doing. And then you get online and play something like Quake with your friend. You'd actually get on a freaking modem. For five minutes, you deathmatch, and you couldn't believe it, you know. And you could actually text, and they blow my head off because I'm texting. And then the, the modem would fall out. You, you call on a phone and say, "Oh my God, we were connected on the internet. Can you believe it? I saw you running by." So, what I'm most excited about is that everything that my life has been ramping up to like from computers to games, all the art and all that from cameras to instruments. You know, even though drums have electric drums and gone places, I still play a regular kit. Um, even though Pro Tools has made it where you can work with your brothers across the, you know, state lines and you can be connected and record live Right, I still record to tape, um, you know, two inch tape. Mm. So my my, it's all coming down to enjoying the mixture of paints over fifty four years and having the mixture right. And every time the brush hits it and hits something, it's just all working out. So now I'm just kind of cleaning up. Like recently, I opened up. Take off your face, which is just a little mask company through Slipknot, you know, just making masks. And it's all limited. It's all fun. It's really my dream of like getting the fans involved where we do contests and they design and, and we do a limited version of their mask. And, you know, they, they make a little money, but they get their vision out. And then we also have it on our stuff. So I'm really, I'm trying to get all the photos all the audio, all the video, all the concepts, anything that wasn't used, anything that was worked on and almost there, everything and anything that was Slipknot and that is Slipknot, I'm trying to get it in one database. So I have a lot of weird things coming. You know, I imagine pretty soon you'll wonder if you're actually 
talking to a real person because I'm very interested in, you know, AI and robots and, and, and moving towards the future. So my brain is always going to try to stay relevant where we're moving. And right now, I would love to have another version of me in a robot sense without my face, but right next to me so we could argue and he could correct me or she could correct me, <laughs> whatever the hell, whatever it is. So imagine that's where I'm going. I'm going to take everything that was that I've had and I'll make sure all of you get all of it. Every song unturned, every piece of art, every little video, every show, every dat tape, every board tape, um, every photograph, everything. It's going to take forever, but that's what I've been starting to do for about the last two years is got it, getting it all really ready. And you should have, you should be seeing some of it. If you're paying attention and you go to the new website, you know, we've, we have things out right now, but there's just so much that sometimes it just passes you by. But if you're really looking, you might be stopped dead in your tracks for what we actually have out right now. It's offered to everyone to pay attention to. You have to really kind of look to understand. But anyway, hopefully that, I'm just very excited, giving it all over. Love it. And I'm sure your fans will be very excited about that as well. A lot will of good you, stuff. Will you be popping into the shows down under at all? My wife has got a couple things going on, and I believe it's looking like I might be able to. So we're awesome. we're sort of putting the energy towards it. Yeah. Um. I I would love to come. Um. Just hang out. It's, I really have a good time if I don't have to play. Um. Because that's a mental thing. It's like you know you're trying to do an interview or you know talk to kid you know VIP or something, but in the back of my head I'm like ugh. I, that monster's coming. I can hear it. You know, like that beast is just in your, it makes you sick. You know, you just know that the mask is going on and the sampling is going to start. And like, it's time to play God. And um, so it's easier for me to come down and not know I don't have to play. So I can just burn out, be around people, just work, work, work and play, play, play. You know what I mean? So, so I'm going to be there, and I just want to take a moment to, you know, just say personally to the culture, to the maggots, hello from the band. We miss everybody. We're really happy you guys had a great time when we were there. We hope everybody's good. We hope everybody's looking after each other, helping each other up. We need to look after each other in this world. Um, keep your heads up. We miss everybody. We love everybody. I'm trying to get down there for this not fest. Take a look out for me. See me, say hi. Otherwise, some nuts coming back real soon. I want to say that before you and I end that up. So, yes. Amazing. New music coming too. New music. Oh, uh, hell so, yeah. So I wouldn't look at it like new music, like album and stuff like this. I think we're going to have some fun. I don't know exactly what we're trying to do. I know that we just want to do what we want to do. So, however it happens, it happens. You know, we're not going to push it. And we're not going to mold it into something it doesn't need to be. But I will tell you, we're having a really good time right now. And some real magical stuff is happening. Um, you know, you can't write it. Everything in Slipknot's meant to be. So when it does happen and you shed a tear and you, you have a little smile, it feels good, man. You know, it feels, feels good to have good feelings in this, this reality. So we always want everybody to have good feelings. Well, thank you so much, Clown, for sharing with us what an amazing journey it has been the last over 25 years um, since, you know, Slipknot's formation to talking about, you know, the future as well. Um, it's been really cool uh, chatting with you about it. And uh, we really look forward to NotFest Australia 2024 and hopefully see you there. I really appreciate it. I want to tell you, I love your style. I love your, uh, I love your collar. So oh, I, uh, I, I, I rock, I rock, uh, I try to rock the same thing. I wish I had the thick ass hair like you, but, uh, 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 I love, I love your collar with the, the circle rivet things or the eyelets or whatever. Yeah. It comes, cool? 
it comes with this like detachable like cross metal necklace and you can like hook it in there or you can take it off oh and, wow yeah I mean, it's, anyway i really like your style so thank anyway, you appreciate thank, it thank, thank you say hi if i come down to the festival i will uh, let anybody know if you need anything else i'm around and uh cheers have a great rest of your evening wonderful you too have a great day